another trivia bot who's throwing out trivia questions right now, and apparently the last answer was cars, and I don't really know how that related to the question, but still. So, Spuddington, how's it going? Pretty decently, pretty decently. Might be worth mentioning the trivia bot is actually a bot that, that we aren't running. It just it just appeared. Um, I assume it does this to a lot of channels. I, I, don't, I wouldn't know, though, so we are... They are underway with a game here, you know, uh, secondary to Trivia Bot, I do, I do know, but uh, Dragonborn's playing the, the first blood fishing attempt in that, uh, in that upper jungle there. What they tend to do is just watch for that guy going in for the early ward to get that Wraith Camp uh, vision, and then they just pick him up, pick him up for that first blood, but not going to happen. Shushay running around in mid, Oktoberfest Gragas, nobody doing, nobody's really doing anything here. And like, they have the sort of compositions where they want to kind of hang back and not be too aggressive in this early game. I guess, um, you know, with Nunu and also with the sound of the power cord and also the extra burst damage, you know, it's a nice level 1, but at the same time you have Mover with the pretty strong uh, damage coming out from the uh, enhanced auto attack, because he has actually gone for that flay first as well. And we also have Graves, so Hosen and Mover just looking to pick up these wolves, which is pretty standard. Like, we will right now just have Virtual going onto these uh, golems and then straight onto the red buff, which is standard for that uh, route right now. And then you'll basically have the bot lane go for some more AXP by uh, picking up a, a camp in the jungle, basically to give them a bit of an edge when they hit that laning phase. Yeah, it's worth noting though, right now, Game Faction's level 1 has basically consisted of them putting wards everywhere. They've got uh, they've got bot lane. They've got the banana brush area. Although that's the explorer ward, so it's going to run out. They've got the banana brush at the top, and they've got that uh, corner of top warded. So that means they don't actually uh, because they've committed so many wards all over the place. And I believe they are mostly wards that have been put down by the laners themselves. That means they're not going to have to be as concerned um, with early jungle ganks. That being said, though. Nocturne is one of those guys who's pretty okay with just farming to six, so it, while it will be a little bit of security, I'm not sure if it'll be uh, necessarily worthwhile. Yeah, for sure. Nocturne likes to try and get to that level six. I mean, he does have pretty competent early game ganks. With that just bringer, brings his own damage into that gank, along with Unspeakable Horror, which is a really nice CC ability for that early game. But at the same time, he can farm pretty effectively. He has a lot of jungle clear, as well as Nunu. I mean, Nunu just likes to kind of chill, go into the enemy jungle, pick up a couple of camps, pick up the big wolf, big wraith, and then just go back into his own jungle. I mean, he doesn't necessarily need to gank. But he does have very competent ganks as well in this early game, with everyone being so, um, so dominant with all this warding all over the map, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, and thus far we haven't seen him try. We would expect him to hit level 4 at least. You know, likes to get that 2 points in Dustbringer for that clear, likes to then start putting points into Unspeakable Horror so that he can gank if he wants to. And um, interesting point to note at the moment, Jokey's in this top lane on that Malphite is maxing E right now. We've actually also got uh, Jankies, which is just confusing. Oh, wait, no, is that Jankos? Yeah, Jankos. We've got Jokey's and Jankos. Um, but Jankos going into the enemy jungle, he is that Nunu, he is just going to be trying to steal things wherever possible. Hussein is on low, low health here, they will have spotted the Nunu here though. Don't think that's going to come to anything, and actually quite a lot of wasted time there for Nunu. Yeah, we have some of that name synergy coming out from GF Gaming, and right now we have a lot of hurt being brought down upon Hosan, coming in from that Woolite and Elendix lane, and uh, in fact the Sona and Twitch lanes are coming out pretty, pretty solidly. I mean, Fresh isn't able to land any of these hooks that he really wants to bring out, and he can't really get those engages coming in for Hosan so he can bring in that burst damage. And as a result, you're just going to be ground down by the poke lane, and they're doing a really, really nice job at the moment. Graves is going to find it quite hard, doesn't have the sustain coming in from Mover, um, and let's take a look at his quintessences. Has in fact gone for the life steal quintessences, so he will be able to sustain himself as this laning phase goes on. But for the moment, he won't really be able to go for that engagement, even if uh, Fresh lands that hook. Yeah, maybe a little bit of free damage. And we did also see Virtual in the enemy jungle stealing away that wolf camp. Uh, did manage to escape with his life when Nunu went for him because the snowball blocked out by that um, by that sh by that shroud of the darkness. Is it? Is it shroud of darkness? I, think so. I want to call. I want to say it's shroud. It yeah, is shroud, shroud of darkness. darkness. There we go. The spell shield. But uh, we actually have Shushe in this mid lane in a bit of trouble. Does manage to just walk out. Nothing too much coming of that. 
Yeah, Nunu, he, he is pretty good at sticking to people, but he really doesn't have a lot of damage to follow up. With the red buff, he's in, the good, he's in good shape, but that's just, in fact, worn off. He's actually going to turn around this corner, find himself a virtual. Wolves are already gone, and uh, honestly, it's going to be very difficult to lock down the Nunu, even if they wanted to go for him, because he just has, well, he has Blood Bill, he also has the Ice Blast. There's not any chance you're going to be catching a Nunu anytime soon, and he's so tanky, not really worth it. But meanwhile, the bottom host are flashing up red once again, not having a fun time down at the spot lane. Yeah, I've got to say, he is really, really coming out worse here. 34 CS to 32, and Twitch is going to scale hard. Ruber is going in, though. He has got the Lantern down, pulling in the Virtual. Going to be going for this aggression here. He had, There is an Ignite down. The Barrier has been popped. Wulai going very low, but Virtual does not have the sight. He cannot see him, and he will not hit him. It's going to be an escaping Twitch, but he might be able to turn this round onto Sona. He's jumping in. He's gone in with the auto attack, but it does look like he doesn't quite have it. And now he is in trouble. We've got Hosanna Mover here to try and help him. Putting down some damage on Jankos. Jankos is going to be trying to keep himself sustained and alive. Has to back out. Hook goes down. Doesn't quite hit. Yeah, the hook not quite connecting, but Jankos wants that snowball coming onto Hosan Mover. Taking a lot of damage as well. Flame comes down. First blood picked up, will die in turn, flash comes in from Hosan, not quite enough, and will be taken down for the privilege. And that actually turns into a two for one situation, but in fact, Malphite appears, takes down Nocturne, bringing that to a three for one here, Spellington. Yeah, and you've got to say that's not gone well at all for Dragonborns. The, uh, what happened though? I, I see Malphite teleported to the bot lane, but I didn't see any wards for him to jump to, so maybe he went to a minion or something? Uh, but regardless, really, really solid performance there. Game Faction actually kind of lucked out though, because Hosan, he tried, he tried to what, you know, he tried what would, had it have worked, been a next level play, because he flashed in for that buckshot, nearly killed two people, but unfortunately didn't kill either of them, um, and then was sort of under tower and poisoned and dead, uh, which didn't really work out for him in the end, but, you know, that's how things go sometimes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, sometimes you just need to take a risk if you want some plays to come out, and it doesn't always work, and then you kind of look like an idiot when it doesn't. But, you know, it was worth the try. Almost a double kill picked up. And in fact, I just took a look at, um, to basically see how Malphite got down there, because there was no minions, there was nothing really could put onto. Looked, and it was actually a pink ward in that back crotch, which basically expired a second or two after he got down there. So, it was basically perfectly timed, and uh, all calculated, I would say, Spunnington. It's, it's always all calculated until it isn't, so we do have Hosan, yeah. We've got quite a creep wave here, and we do have Light coming back into the lane. It looked like Mufo was quite ready for that, actually. He uh, ended up running away, but wave clearing at tower, it's it's not bad. I mean, Hosan on that grave is going to have an easy time clearing, clearing the wave, if nothing else. That being said, Twitch getting scary right now, 57 CS to 52 is pretty much the same gap they had before and Malphite in top lane is very low we've got Gob going under the tower for him flashes in for that venomous bite and that will be the kill yeah, she ground him down very nicely. We do have Jankos looking for some blood. Walk, Ward goes over the wall. Gob's gonna have to maybe run upwards, but he's being caught by the Ice Blast and will follow up with the um, Absolute Zero as well. Meanwhile, bottom we get Hosan picking up a kill straight onto that zone of support. Woodlight dropping low as well. Box comes down, but huge damage coming out from the spray and Prey. Mover follow up some more damage and actually finishes Graves off with that last auto attack. We do have the ultimate coming in from Nocturne. Mover picks up that kill. Another ping comes down into mid as um, Oriana bites the dust. Excellent shockwave, not quite connecting and uh, in fact didn't come off cooldown either. Yeah, it was not quite fast enough essentially, but very, very, very close performance there all across the map. And you just saw that, that kind of thing where suddenly one team realizes, right, their jungler is committed there. Therefore, my jungler can commit here without fearing being counter ganked. So let's go. And, and that kind of snowballs and everyone's like, oh, right, yeah, he's committed there. So I can commit here. He's there, there. And that, that causes fights all over the map at once, which is a little bit difficult to play by play cast because then you have to jump all over the map and maintain some map awareness. But... That's life, and we do have everyone. Kind of going back to farming now. Doesn't look like there's too much to be said at the moment. Builds coming out. We do have that Cage's Lucky pick on Gragas. In addition to 83 farm, which... Pulse? Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's nearly perfect farm at this point. 
Yeah, that's very good. Um, he's probably been taking the camps as well for that uh, farm. And in fact, we do have Sushi aggressing onto Oriana once again. Shockwave actually this time does in fact connect. Virtual coming in, Sushi flashing over that wall into uh, enemy territory. Virtual actually might be able to take down Oriana. Fantastic barrel over the wall. And in fact, God comes in for some of the action. Picking up that kill with Venom's Spite. The Venom is spidling coming around the corner. An excellent ultimate coming in from Sushi, picking up another kill. Enforced Oktoberfest. So... We have Hosen in that bottom lane solo at the moment, did take a bit of damage, but yeah, that fight was honestly... <laughs> I feel like Shushi didn't actually know that Nunu was there, but when he found out, he kind of made the right clutch plays and didn't really care. And actually got a little bit of damage going on, we like that buck Buckshot coming down, but... It was one of those things where everyone piled in, but the, the response from Malphite just wasn't there. He wasn't available for whatever reason, I do not know what that actually was. But he did not show up to that fight, and honestly, I feel that may have cost them quite dearly there. Yeah, I think the primary reason was the, um, that he was dead. Um, but, you know... Good point. That is what started off the fight. My memory <laughs> is that of a goldfish. Yeah, but uh, Oriana, well, I say Oriana, Elise up a top lane against that Malphite doing basically huge amounts of work. About 10 CS ahead, um, almost 12 CS, which is about two waves, which is pretty decent at this stage in the game. And uh, I just want to hold that forward just for a second because we have some aggression coming in from Nunu down a bot lane. Not quite going to pan out. And in fact, just places down the pink ward, clears up that ward, and maybe next time might come out a little bit better. But in that top lane, we do have that Elise facing off against Malphite. Malphite not going to have the greatest time in the world. We'll be picking up the Chalice, so he's got the extra magic resist as well. But Elise is a very, very dominant laner. And against Malphite, he doesn't really have that same dominance. Not going to have a fun time. Meanwhile, mid, we do have Jankos getting a bit aggressive on Sushi, but he in fact pops down the ultimate as well. Absolute Zero comes out, in fact pops it down almost immediately. Virtual coming in over the wall as well. Should be picking up this kill. Now Jankos looking to follow up some more damage, but Nunu not quite got it. Gob also coming down just to make sure no more aggression comes out of Nunu. Yeah, that's, uh, that's again, it's not quite the fight that Game Faction wanted there. They're just getting a little bit outmaneuvered at the moment, and uh, the burst out of Gragas is pretty scary too. In fact, it looks like he might be going for a Morella Nomicon, which is, which is an interesting one. We've actually got the teleport at bottom lane. Malphite coming in, actually going to be going for this. Flash Crescendo goes down. We've got the Twitch damage in. We've got the Unstoppable Force, and now are they going to dive Hosan? Hosan is taking a lot of poke here from Twitch, but no, I don't think they want to go for that joke. He wants to go back, wants to try and hold his tower, but that's probably going to be gone, so it actually looks like they're going to go for Dragon instead. Yeah, almost looked like that gang wasn't going to work because the teleport came in so far away. But the flash into Crescendo actually kept them down. Woolite looking to turn on to Hosan as well. Hosan just poking around, maybe trying to get a steal off with that uh, collateral damage because it is indeed up. Alendix just taking some hits as well, but Hosan forced to make a hasty retreat. And we do have Malphite just turning up the recall because we do have a strong push coming in from Virtual and Gobble for top lane. Yeah, and if they take two towers for this, that is not going to have been worth the teleport, the gank, the committing of summoner spells, and the ult ultimate. And in fact, they're going straight under it for Dobergrass, who's going to be just flashing out. And I don't think they're going to be able to pin down Virtual, although that, that cocoon there did just whiff, so doesn't look like it's going to happen anyway. They are going to be chasing this, though. Jokey's going in with the Oriana speed. Now, flashing over the wall there, Elise. Can Virtual keep himself alive here? He's just going to be running, but the Blood Boil should have got them to catch up in the end. Doesn't look like they wanted to go for it though. Yeah, and looks like Sushi gonna pick up another tower down at mid lane as well. And the typical play when the enemy team goes for that Drake. Okay, they're down there. We have the jungler in the top jungle and we can just go for a tower. We pick up tower immediately becomes, you know, tit for tat and then you come out fairly ahead as well because you have that map present. Drake's gonna respawn later. Mover maybe in a dodgy situation, just being chased down, but just gonna kick him away from that turret. But what Dragonborn did right there was took a, t uh, took a turret top lane, took another one, and also took the mid turrets on top of that. That was three towers in quick succession for basically a Drake. And also the kill on Mover, but it just really wasn't worth it. Yeah, it's it's honestly as well, that's why they backed out when they were chasing down Virtual because of that reaction push in the mid lane. And it's just a sign that the, the, the Dragon Balls are doing very good stuff here. We've got Shushi coming in, in with the body slam, in with the barrel roll, in with the ultimate if he wants it, but he's got it down and I'm not sure they want this anymore. Elendix is low. Mubert's gonna finish that off with the ignite ticking. It does actually pick it up in the end. Shushi does go down now and Mubert could be in a lot of trouble as well. So it's with his last breath, I want this ward dead. And that is going to mean a very dead Mubert and should mean a tower push as well. 
I mean, let's be honest, if the only thing you can do before you die is anger the enemy support, then you're going to do it. And uh, we did have Mover picking up that ward before he died. Hosan in a dodgy situation, nice quick draw out of the way of that uh, Venom cast. But we are looking to make a strong push down mid lane. That, however, has left the top lane wide open as Elise pushes this one down. Marshmite, uh, meanwhile, in mid, along with Virtual as well, maybe looking to push down this top turret, just sniffing around that blue buff as well. We have uh, someone flashing up red down a bot lane. Hosan taking some damage. And uh, Oriana just forced to back off as well. But once again, we do have uh, uh, Warlight popping down the spray and pray. Collateral damage comes down alongside the bookshot. Not going to be enough. And in fact, Hosan 1 versus 3 pushed him away from this turret. And actually, the flash comes down from both AD carries. Looking for this push, but so we just uh, have Warlight. He's going to go ahead and stealth up. And bot lane, we have four people from GF Gaming committed. Meanwhile, top Malphite just on his lonesome, looking to stop Gragas, Elise, and Nocturne, maybe looking for one of these turrets. Yeah, you've got to say, Hosan did a pretty darn good job there of holding his tower, and that has really stalled out any advantage that GF were able to take from that that kill on Shushe and Mover. So, yeah, that's that's cost them fairly dearly, in fact, because they just weren't able to push the tower, and Hosan has actually got a red elixir ticking down, so he must have had that for a while and using that in that situation. Going to be taking that bottom tower much more easily. Crescendo goes across though, so Twitch will be coming in. Has been stealth, will ha not have the prey and spray, but he's going to take it out anyway. Mover now in a bit of trouble, has been slowed down. Going to be getting chased down by Twitch. Does actually pick the kill up on Sona and flashes out, so he might get out of this. We might going to be chasing this down. Venomous Cast does land, the slow goes down, we've got the Nocturne Ultimate elsewhere though, so he's going to be going in on Jankos, Jankos in a lot of trouble, Jokey's in turn, he's going to have to use that Unstoppable Force at point blank range, going to be taking out two in terms of uh, knocking them up, anyway, we've got Virtual in a lot of trouble, but he's low, it's not going to be enough, we've got the hook from the side on Mover on Wulite, Mover now running away, and it does look like that fight, which was rather messy, actually Shushe cares for Dobie Grass. Gra Gra whatever, and Rulai <laughs> is actually stealth in the middle, Gob gonna be taking the damage onto him, Mover goes down, he doesn't manage to pick up two though, the poison will tick, but it won't be enough on Gob. That was an incredibly messy teamfight right there, Spuddington, I mean we had the paranoia coming over the wall, Gob in fact popping down the rappel to get out of that absolute zero was basically on full charge, paranoia comes in and then actually turn that teamfight on its head, have Dragon Balls coming out ahead once again, in that team fight as well as on turret. Four turrets right now for Dragonborns and about 7k ahead on gold as well. In fact, 6k ahead, my maths is awful. And um, yeah, basically just we have GF Gaming looking to pick up the pieces. Volume Bass, do you think this will be acceptable? All right, all right. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, that's that's preferable, and I'm I'm glad that it's hopefully fixed. Um, for some reason it switched itself back up to volume on the on the Windows settings. I'm pretty sure, it wasn't like that before, but whatever. Uh, yeah. So everyone has kind of resumed going farming. Dragonborns now definitely in the. Oh, so they have got that gold advantage. They've got the tower pushing advantage. Is pulse? What do you think they're going to go for next? I'm not entirely sure what you said, Spuddington, for, for, because for me, you were cutting out. But uh, I think you were saying something along the lines of where they're going to go for next. And GF Gaming right now just need to, well, as I said before, pick up the pieces. They need something to basically go on and pick and um, win a skirmish. Because right now, the Drake isn't um, alive. It's 18 minutes into the game. Baron is really not an option. So right now in mid and top and bot, they need to stop themselves from being pushed in, maybe win a couple of team fights, but just tr kind of um, catch DB out of place. Drake has just spawned, Pink goes down onto the bot lane of GF Gaming, and it looks like Woolite and Alendix may be looking to uh, stop this from happening, but they are quite low at the... well, I say low, but 2 versus 3 is what I meant to say, and the Drake is going down fairly quickly. Nunu's not around the area, so if Steel is definitely on the cards. And the hook goes down, however, from Mover transitioning maybe this into a kill. Box comes down as well. Wallite's just gonna bite just very quickly. We have <laughs> actually have Malphite coming in with that teleport. Whiffs the ultimate. Nice uh, juke out of the way by Sushe. And Lendix now in the, in the nasty positions. Hosan looks to follow once again. Paranoia comes down, looking to follow up into the base of GF Gaming. I don't think it's quite gonna pan out. In fact, he actually picks up the kill. Sushe looking to follow up into Lendix as well. Ignite goes down, and he will be keeping himself alive. 
with the happy hour. And Virtual picks up another turret down at the top as well. Oriana trying her best to push these guys back. And Malphite as well looking to join in the action. Flash comes down, Repel looks for the follow-up, but it's not going to quite connect. Yes, is my voice now not cutting out and also not crackling when I'm noisy? I hope. I, 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 I've, I've done some fiddling with settings again, and I, and I assume you can hear me at least. Seems okay so far. Right, well, if I just cut out or whatever, just start talking over me, whatever. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen, but um, for some reason some of my settings reset, so I got screwed, basically, Windows. Um, but that's just life and first world problems. So we have got Graves in that bottom lane, going to be shoving that out. And I did catch that there was a heck of a lot of, of fighting going on, and I do now see a, an upper inhib that has been exposed. Virtual in a battle to the death with red buff there, can be recalling after that. That's looking like pretty much a bullseye there for Dragonborns. Do you expect to see them just kind of form up and go straight for that next? Yeah, it definitely seems like this entire game is just snowballing out of control right now for Dragonborns. I mean, they picked up the uh, bottom team fight very, very confidently and also picking up a top and hip to turret. It's just not looking great for GF Gaming as they've just been collapsed upon all over the map and there's very very little recourse as well. They tried their best to maybe get something done off of that Drake, the teleport comes in from Malphite but um, landing that ultimate on Sasuke very very difficult when he has that body slam and also the reactions to boost as well so didn't quite pan out. He is right now 2 and 1 so he's doing pretty decently also on, the, on Woolite He's 6 and 3. He's got 170 farm. He's looking in good shape, so if they are going to go for a straight up team fight, they might be in a good position. That being said, they haven't been quite able to go for those 5v5 team fights. Yeah, and that is going to be a weakness. If you fall behind and your burst AoE damage isn't enough to bring people down to zero, then you start to really run into problems because there's very little follow up on these kinds of compositions. They do have the saving grace in that respect that they have twitched today and we have Jokey going in on Gob here going to be backing out though virtual hanging around in the background but yeah like I say it's one of those things which you can't really um, take account of on that AoE comp don't, if you don't have the follow up you just can't you can't bring down the enemy team yeah, I mean, what they do have going for them right now is the Oriana and the Malphite ultimate, and also a pretty strong team fight as well. They have a lot of CC, but they don't really have that much damage. I mean, what, like, is getting into the position where he's a dangerous AD carry. Get to about two or three items, you're starting to do a ton of damage. They start multiplying together and doing a ton of damage. Um, whether they can actually keep him alive is another matter entirely, as Hosan gets a very aggressive down the bot lane, just speaking of it. But uh, yeah, right now, from Dragonborn's perspective, all they really need to do is keep on going as they, as they were, wait for another objective. If GF Gaming maybe look for um, some sort of contest, they're just going to turn around, slap them down, and pick up another team fight. Right now, they could maybe wait it out, maybe go for Baron, but they really don't need to. Baron is um, a very interesting thing to go for because you can get far ahead. It gives you a great buff, which you can just carry on pushing with. But at the same time, it's an easy uh, way to allow the enemy team to get back into it as Mover lands a fantastic death sentence onto a Warlight. Flash comes down and the stealth but perfectly um, angled um, collateral damage will pick that one up as well. And the follow-up from Suche on to Elendix, picking up another kill. Two members of GF Gaming falling down a bot lane. Massive damage coming in from Sushi as well. Hosan just in that brush. Jankos coming in, forming up behind him. And the ultimate comes in. There's a shockwave from the Malphite ultimate. Paranoia comes in as well. Looking a bit of this kill onto, um, onto Oriana. Picking up another kill. Three for two so far. Jankos and Jankees looking to fall back. Hosan diving this turret underneath on top of Nunu. Not quite if he's, I'm not sure if he's going to get this one. Virtual also following up onto... Malphite and Nunu forced to flash over the wall. This has just snowballed out of control down the spot lane for GF Gaming. Yeah, and again, they're just not able to get themselves formed up. And in that case, they actually chased after. We've actually got Gob in the top lane. Has been flash slowed by Sona there, but not enough damage there. And they aren't going to be able to lock him down long enough for Twitch to get there. So Gob did use that flash. Did get the inhib though while that fight was going on. We've got Hosan going in for Jankos again. He's very aggressively trying to kill this Yeti, but unable to do so yet again. Nunu escapes with his life and a sliver of health, but you have to say it's not going to be that important. Wulai going for Hosan now has got that expunge. The poison is still ticking. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough or not. It is, in fact, so. And he is unable to reach the lantern in time. That is a, uh, another very close call, but Dragonborn still have got that inhib down and do have the map position.
Yeah, and uh, we did have Hosan with a couple stacks of True Grit, but turns out it's True Damage coming out from Twitch, so not quite able to escape with his life. And it almost looked like Nunu was going to fall as well, coming full circle with Graves looking to pick that one up, but not quite turning out. That will give them some breathing room. AD carry down from um, DB will you know, give GF Gaming a little chance to just catch their breath, maybe look to uh, reform and go for another team fight. But when they were in that team fight down the bot lane, it went a lot better than you would have originally thought. But then you had the follow-up coming in from the rest of DB and it didn't quite turn out. And Moveford <laughs> actually picking up that red buff with that death sentence. Wow, that's uh, that's next level right there. We also see that locket pick up on Moveford, so that's an unusual choice there. It does suit supports fairly well, but you usually tend to see it on that kind of bruiser AD champion going in with the cooldown reduction and the armor being nice to get in close with. Being said, Thresh is probably one of the beefiest supports, does like to get in close himself. We're seeing Shushe actually at the moment pulling a split pushing trick here. He's actually drawing a lot of aggression. Twitch and Nunu are going towards him, but doesn't like Mover is trying to spot out that Sona. Unable to get it, does actually... Uh, nice little trick there he, you saw. He went for the death sentence and it, and it actually missed, but he threw out the lantern over the wall to Hosan. So if he pulled himself in, Hosan could jump to him and we actually got Sona in a lot of trouble. Sona uh, does actually bait out Gob though. That does look like the Unstoppable Force will not be... Uh, was used on Gob, but now we've got Virtual rejoining the fight. Going to be getting aggressive. Jokies goes in. He has got the Sunfire Cape. He's just going to keep punching him in the face. And there we get that Snowball down. Now Jankies... Uh, Jankos, sorry, going to be running away. Jeez. And Virtual will be in a bit of trouble running out himself. I just got that one second after you said it, and we do have Virtual looking to follow up onto Nunu once again, but it looks like the yes, he's just gonna run away with his life once again, but uh, very, very difficult to pin, out, pin down Nunu with the Ice Blast along with that, um, with the Blood Boil, but it's, uh, it's not looking great for GF Gaming right now. We do have DB just pushing once again into their base, that inhibitors are already down, so all the minions in all the other lanes are going to be stronger, but remember, this is a best of three, so it looks like, um, even if DB pick up this game, then GF Gaming might be able to come back into it a game later and uh, maybe go 2 and 1. But right now, this game isn't looking great. No, definitely not. They're not completely out of it. But at the moment, it feels like they don't have much of a response to the mobility from Dragonborns. They don't really have the goal difference to force fights in a 5 on 5 either. So, yeah, it's difficult for them right now. Dragonborns honestly have to slip up. But... The style they're running, the mobility style, they keep the enemy running around a lot. That can easily be uh, the cause of a slip up because all it takes is one of your guys to get caught out and then for a fight to be forced after that. I actually see Malphite. Um, what? He had purple hands. I thought he had a Lich Bane for a second. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. We have got uh, Gob in that jungle. And they're actually doing a remarkably good job here, Game, uh, game Faction. They need to keep rush control as much as possible and look for those picks. Yeah, they really have to because if they are going to come back into this game, they need a pick, they need a circumstance which basically puts them in the better position. Even if it's just DB grouping up into a tight ball so they can land the Malphite ultimate straight into that Orianna ultimate, layer on the, um, the Absolute Zero and the Crescendo, that's maybe all they need. And maybe looking to pick up Hosan, Smokescreen goes down and Nunu's going to go ahead and walk through it, so he should be safe for this day, but that's exactly what they're looking for, Spuddington. They're looking for this pick to happen. Yeah, if they can get that, that will suit them pretty well, but again, they're being outmaneuvered and Dragonborns are going to pick up another free tower. We've actually got the three-man attempt on the Baron while this is going on, so at this point, even if Shushe and Hosan die, they're not going to care. That will be worth it in their eyes, and Jankos... Taking a lot of damage from Hosan. The burst comes down. The Orianna ult as well. We've got Jankos getting destroyed by Shushe. And we've got Hosan getting locked up. We've got the ultimates coming in. Zonius goes down. Might try and pick up Orianna as his last breath. Doesn't manage to do it. But that Baron has been taken. And now they actually... It's a three on four. I'm not sure if Dragonborns necessarily want to go for this. Or whether they want to wait for the respawn. But it does look like they're going to. Yeah, and I mean, the main question right now we have to ask ourselves is, do they have the strength within those three players? We have Mover, we have Nocturne, along with Elise. I mean, they're, they're pretty tanky, and they do a lot of damage as well. Maybe not quite enough, both carries are down, and as you said, they might look uh, just to back off. Two exposed inhibitors, though, so uh, if they just group up 5 versus 5, they are probably going to win. And, well, probably the best course of action right now is just to uh, go ahead, regroup, 
with that Baron buff and uh, go from the other team fight after that. But Hosan and Suche up in just around 10 seconds as well. Will Ice actually laying down the hurt straight onto Virtual. Unspeakable Horror goes down and the fight just uh, pushes him away. But Mover may be caught out here as well. Flay goes down. I'm not sure if Jankos wants to just carry on sticking to him because he certainly could, but he really can't commit too many people as we get Gob getting highly aggressive. Drain to Oriana as well. Spiling's doing some damage as well. Gob actually coming out with a flash into that Neurotoxin, but not quite enough to take down Oriana. And all of a sudden, not looking so good for Dragonborns. Four versus five for at least another minute or so. Yeah, they just need to be a little bit careful. They're getting a little bit antsy at the moment, trying to make things happen when they really don't need to. They don't need to force a fight right now, this minute. They can afford to wait till all their guys are in, pos in position and they are pushing out the lanes. And Game Faction actually have got... Uh, they have spotted out Nunu here, actually. He's just going to be backing out. But at this point, Game Faction's strategy of warding the heck out of everything could be coming to a bit of a close because there is that Oracle's on move there. And that's going to be difficult. Jankos taking a lot of damage from Hosan. He's not going to be able to take him out, though. Too, too big, too slowing, and that is just going to be one Yeti escape. But, will Shushake look to push this top lane? He definitely could. Yeah, and Susei's just kind of chilling in the brush. He's not doing too much at the moment, but might be looking to uh, maybe get aggressive onto that top inhibitor if they just commit themselves down their bot lane. And it does, in fact, look like Graves and Fresh just... Uh... Moving around that area, just kind of to push all the waves in because as soon as they do get at least back in the action as she is coming back from spawn, then they need to be in the right position to immediately get aggressive. So if you have those waves pushing in, then you'll be in a good position to do so. And Sushi is just going to carry on the trend up at top lane. So we're like just going to go ahead and, uh, well, do the opposite and counter clear these waves. And all the time that they are pushing in, we do have the carries getting a little bit stronger. 261 farm right now onto that Warlight. Like, hook goes over the wall to Lendix, but not looking to follow up on that one. We do have Host Sound down the bottom. And probably the best course of action is just to push all over the map. There's two exposed inhibitors, and there's also uh, a tower down the bot lane, which is basically on full health right now. And in fact, I just want to group up and go for a team fight. Take down an inhibitor, then get in the better position to um, start sieging the rest of them. Yeah, and actually, bottom now we have Hosan going very, very low. Spray and Prey did come across him. He didn't actually pick up the kill on Hosan, though. Hosan has been shielded. He will keep himself alive. And now we're seeing the pressure everywhere else. Elise is going in mid. We've got Shushe on that top lane. He can't actually deal with Jokies very well. And we've actually got Gob now getting pinned down, getting attacked by three members. But have they actually got the damage? They've got the sustained slows, though, so it's not going to matter on that respect. We've got the Zonia's popped by Shushe trying to take out that top in him. Gob goes down, but the bottom in push is coming in. They've got that tower down. They will now move on to that in him as well. We've got the damage from Hosan. We've got the damage from Virtual. They will take this out. Shushe is still alive somehow. Does actually end up getting taken out by Sona. Oriana now in that bottom lane, going in for some damage. Jankies going for that. No, Jankos. Hosan going very, very low. He has got the lifesteal, though. Does get taken out with the last breath of Oriana. But now Virtual turning it round onto that Malphite again. Does look like they're going to back out or no? They're going to keep going, actually. Just... No, they are going to back out. They're just going to take a very strange route to do so. Slow gets blocked, though, so he's not going to care. That is a clean escape. Yeah, another very messy team fight coming out in this game, Splittington. It was just all over the place. It was a two for two, but Twitch got picked up at the start. So, it, in fact, I said uh, two for three, but it was a three for three overall because Twitch was taken down at the very start of that. And it gave them a lot of leeway, but at the same time, GF Gaming just um, kept themselves in it. And, well, not maybe in a position to counter push, they at least kept themselves alive. Top inhibitor did, however, go down at the bottom inhibitor along with that tower. But they have bought themselves a little time. I wouldn't say it's put them in a better position. In fact, it's put them in a worse position, losing two inhibitors. But at least they know they can kind of fight them, at least on their own turf. Yeah, and you've got to wonder now what will be their strategy. Because it's clear now that Dragon Balls are just going to keep going for this split push pressure approach. That being said, at this point, they actually are kind of being forced to go for that mid lane. But they do have the super creeps, the double super creeps now, um, like in the top and the bot lane, rather than the double super creeps, which I mean when you get all three in here, because that was a confusing way of phrasing it. But um, what they're going to do probably is just look to pressure this mid in hib and wait for someone to be forced to commit to the other lane. Once that happens, then they can just straight up and push down that middle in hib, and from there, they just need to wait, really, because of that double in here. We've actually got Jankos in a bit of uh, an aggressive position. Virtual getting slowed. It does look like they're just going to back out, though. 
Yeah, they have grouped up, so they might maybe uh, go for this team fight. Well, right now, they just need to get in position where they can land a good layer of ultimates. That's exactly what they want. However, Lendix not in the greatest of positions. Flash comes out, and, uh, and in fact, we do have the ultimate coming down from Sushi as well. Looks like they're going to looking to get aggressive. Well, aware of the fact I said Sushi, but. Uh... <laughs> I'm sure Bass will be on that in an instant. So, Hosan looking to get aggressive onto this middle and here with a random spider coming down as well. And right now is looking to be another poke fest. Well, if I wanted to be excessively British, I could call him Shushai. Because that's how you pronounce EI in English. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Shushai. Uh, Shushine boy. So, we have got a little bit of kind of poking going on right now. But this is what I said, we're now probably going to be seeing someone being forced to commit to that bot lane. We've actually got Wulite committed, and Hosan poking down the middle in him. They can't afford to lose too much health on that, or it will just get taken out. It does look like the all-in is coming in. We've got Jokey going in. We've got the crescendo across four. It does actually not get uh, the quick draw down. We've actually got the shockwave on three as well. We've got the damage from Twitch coming in the back. Virtual going low. Hosan going kill. Uh, Shushe has popped that Zonius and now he's capable of bursting anyone, but he's not going to go to do so. He does just jump out with the body slam. We've got the Venomous Bite go goes down on Twitch. We've got the damage coming in. Can they take out Shushai and then go for the save on their Nexus? But I don't think they can. It's just being Shushe playing too much of an annoying person right now. He is pressuring them. He picks up one. He picks up... No, he doesn't pick up two. He's very, very close. I thought that was an Ignite there on that, uh, on that Grievous Wound, but it doesn't matter. Picks up two. And now he's going to pick up the Nexus, well played. Yeah, Suche bringing in the double kill and ultimately the Nexus. And even if they had just repelled Suche, they needed something.